What's going on guys, Sebastian Esquita here. I wanna discuss a business model that I used to run very, very heavily, and I don't anymore, but I do know a lot of information on it, and I want to explain the exact business plan for how to buy and resell iPhones. It's a business model that's very lucrative. It is very time consuming, so that's why I no longer do it. But if you are just starting out in the entrepreneur space and only have a few hundred bucks, this is probably my biggest recommendation for how you can start and grow your capital to end up working up to thousands of dollars if you only have a few hundred. So watch this whole video through and you should know how to start a pretty solid business. So let's get into it. Number one, let's discuss startup costs. You can start with $100 or a few thousand dollars. It just depends how fast you're willing to move with this business. So for myself, I live in a city that has half a million people and I was posting wanted ads on Craigslist and getting t like probably 10 texts a day. Hey, I have an iPhone for sale, it's cracked. Or hey, I have an iPhone for sale, it's water damage. All of that stuff I was getting texts for every single day, or I have a new one. So if you are only starting out with a hundred bucks, you can't buy that many phones. You can probably buy one phone and then you have to sell it and then you have to recoup that money and then buy another one. But if you have a few thousand dollars, you have the potential to buy a few phones a day every single day for a solid week, resell all of those, get more money back. Let's just say you make 30% and then you continuously rinse and repeat to where in a few months you probably have like, let's just say you 5X to 10X your money which is really good. It's a lot of money that you could make. So startup costs really just depends on how fast you're willing to move. Now, if you have a smaller amount of money, it's completely fine. Just understand you're gonna have to move a little slower with it. The second thing I would like to discuss is what type of iPhones you should purchase. I would suggest used, new and cracked iPhones. Here's why. So buying new phones is great because let's just say someone purchased a phone and then they got it and either don't like it or they wanted to upgrade to a bigger storage or something like that. So they have the phone, they want to sell it, they're willing to sell it for a lower amount. That is good because you can make a solid amount, like not a crazy amount, probably like 10 to 20% profit. Um, so it's not crazy profit. I would say the biggest profit is in cracked iPhones. So let's say you have an iPhone 7 that sells for 200 in used condition, but it has a cracked screen, so you buy it for 100, you can fix the screen for 20 bucks, and then profit $80, which is really, really good. That is where I made most of my money in this business, just because when you have that ability to fix the screens, you normally can make a lot more money. So that's a cool space that you can do, and then also used phones. A lot of people buy new phones, they still have their used ones, so then they just sell it, and they, it's kind of just like free money for them in a sense, obviously not like actually free. Don't go in the comments and say like, oh, it's not free because they paid for it. I know, I'm just saying they bought a phone so they don't have any use for it. So they just want to sell it for sort of whatever they can get. So that is another good market. They're all good. So I would suggest those three, new, used, and cracked. If you don't know how to fix cracked phones, stick to new and used. Next, what I want to discuss is how to actually acquire the phones for a cheaper price. This is something that a lot of people don't know, but I suggest you go on Craigslist and you post on their wanted ads, I buy iPhones, new, used, cracked. That's literally it. Have maybe post one of those a day, switch up the text so you don't get banned for using the same exact text. Have an enticing photo, maybe some money with a phone. That's what I did. I would have just probably like a few thousand dollars fanned out and then a phone. You could probably just Google one and find it and then just post one of those again every single day and you should be good to go. You'll start getting texts as long as your city is larger. Again, mine is half a million population size. So I was getting a lot of texts every single day because there's a lot of people that need to sell their phone. Some things to look out for when you're purchasing these. Number one, meet in a safe area, and if it doesn't feel right when you're doing the deal, do not go through with it. Like if you feel like you're going to a sketchy place, don't do it. If you feel like the person is being weird, do not do it. I had a time where I got robbed because I was very, 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 I'm gonna be honest, I was dumb with this situation. And I have a video on this on my channel. I posted a few years ago, or maybe like a year or two ago. So what happened was I was texting someone, I had bought a phone for, let's just say a hundred bucks. I think it was like 140. No, it was like 120. I fixed the screen for like 30 bucks and I was gonna sell the phone for $300. That's what the market value was. So there was a lot of, I was gonna make over 150 bucks with it. So that was cool. And I was, I listed the phone. Someone texted me and was like, hey, you still have the phone, I'm willing to pay full price, like I'll pay 300 for it. I just need it by tonight, because I, I don't know, I think he said he had something going on that he needed the phone for, and I was like, yeah, sure, that's fine. And then when we were texting, he, he was like, hey, is that, because I was 
talking on OfferUp, I believe. And I had a profile picture of myself, which I sh do not recommend. So what happened was he messaged me and was like, hey, is that you in the profile picture, question mark? I was like, yeah, why? And he's like, oh, I was just curious. And I was like, okay, that's a little weird. Um, why would someone ask that? And then when I was driving there, he's like, are you, like, are you coming alone? Are you bringing anyone? And I am like, now that I'm repeating this, it makes me realize how dumb that like I actually was. I was money hungry and it was dumb. And I was like, yeah, I'm coming alone, like blah, 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 which is stupid. Like, why would I say that? And so then we meet, it's a kid, probably like 15 years old, which I'm glad he, no, I'm glad it wasn't an older person who had a gun. Basically he was checking out the phone. He's like, oh, do you have a SIM card? And I was like, yeah, I have one of my other phone. Um, I'm gonna grab it in my car. And I reached to grab it and he just ran away with my phone. And I was like, that sucks. Um, so yeah, that happened. So meet in a safe area. That is my biggest, biggest recommendation for you guys. If it doesn't feel right, do not do the deal. Another thing is carry something to protect yourself. If it's legal for you to carry a taser, do so. If it's legal for you to carry a gun, do so. Um, because it's very, you never know what people are gonna do uh, for a quick buck to steal something. So that is another big recommendation. The next thing is checking the IMEI. So every phone has a unique IMEI number. It's in the settings and if it's not on, if the phone can't unlock or if it's uh, cracked where you can't access it, you can look on the back of the housing of the phone and it normally has it and also on the SIM tray. It's written in very fine prints. You can check it of those three areas and also on the box if they have the box for the phone. So check the IMEI, make sure the phone is not financed, is not reported blacklisted and is not iCloud locked. That's always, always what you wanna check. Also when you're buying the phone, go on and make sure everything works fine, make sure the camera works, make sure the mic works, make sure everything works, touch the screen all over. Just make sure it functions overall. And then always make sure they log out of their iCloud, all of that stuff just because um, it's it kind of a hassle if they don't log out or if it ends up being iCloud locked You could get screwed out of a lot of money So that is basically how you can run an iPhone reselling business um, I believe I covered everything from the basics to how much you need to how to actually get the phones um, What I would suggest for you guys is to sell online Obviously if you sell on eBay you get 10% fees taken from you which it does suck, but you have more buyers. So you can normally sell your phones quicker and get paid quicker. What happens when you're selling locally is your turnover time is normally longer. For the phones I used to sell, if I posted on eBay, I could normally sell them within a day, uh, one to three days. Now, if I post them locally, I could be sitting on a phone for one to two weeks, which I did not want to do. When I switched to eBay, it was just nice because I was able to buy phones more frequently because I was getting paid more frequently and selling the phones way quicker than if I sold them locally. So that is a big recommendation I can suggest for you guys. But I do believe that's about it. If you guys have any questions or I missed anything, drop them in the comment section below and I'll answer those. But other than that, hope you guys did get value from this. If you did make it to the end, be sure to smash that like button and click the subscribe button below. And I will see you guys in the next video.